Manhunt. The clue of the crimson cork that led to Manhunt. No crime has been committed yet. No murder has been done. Yet. No manhunt has begun. Yet. Hey, wait a minute, Joe. Let's huh? take a look in the store window. It's terrific. Let go of my sleeve. All right, we'll look. Yeah, it is nice. Uh, winter sports, huh? Yeah. Gee, Larson sure has the snappiest outfit. Yeah. Look at that one, will you? Uh-huh. Take a look at that model. She's almost real. Yeah, I wish she was. Hey, Tom, what time is it? We got a date, you know. Girls ain't gonna wait all day. Hey, hey, what's that? Uh, can't you see a car skidder, that's all. I asked you before, what time is it? Let's see. It's just noon. Well, come on, come on, we're late. Okay, but I'd sure like to have one of them sport outfits. I could re... Hey, Joe. What's the matter? Look what's laying there, right in the middle of the window display. Holy mackerel! Look at the blood all over him. And the knife sticking out of his back. Holy mackerel. A murder in Larson's window at high noon. An unseen murderer has done his deadly work. And the blood of the human being now mixes with the artificial snow of a window display. Who will know where to look for the murderer? Who will unmask? The unknown killer who will start the manhunt. Manhunt and the clue of the Crimson Court. Let me see. Uh-uh. No. Nope. Well, I'll take it. Not with seven points. Oh, uh, what am I playing gin running with you for, I'd like to know. Are you sure you haven't put some chemicals in your laboratory on the back of the car so you can read them? <laughs> if I could do that, I wouldn't be spending my time in the police laboratory. Would I, Pat, with that? No, Drew, you wouldn't. But that's the third straight game that you've won. Uh, I wish we had a nice, fresh murder to work on instead of sitting here at same time. <laughs> you wait right here and I'll go out and shoot somebody. Come on, old man. Deal in the cards. <laughs> Hey, Drew. Well, Bill Martin, a homicide sergeant in person. Want to take a hand, Bill? I want to take a hand, he says. No, I don't want to take a hand. I want you to lend me a hand. Oh, game's over, Pat. What is it, Bill? What's up? Well, one of these days someone's going to get killed and there'll be fingerprints and something we can trace. But today ain't one of them. We got a murder, Drew, but a Lulu. That's what we've been waiting for. What's the story, Bill? What's the story, she says. There isn't any story. That's the trouble. You know last week's apartment store? Sure, it's that her name. Yeah. And a dozen people are looking in their window all the time. Yet a half hour ago, a corpse suddenly grows on the floor of the window, and nobody saw how it got there. Oh, but that's impossible. Impossible, she says. Sure, it's impossible. Except for one thing. It happened to happen. Take it easy and slower, Bill. All right. Look. A fellow named Fred Stantley was stabbed in Larson's window. Huh? Nobody saw it happen. Yet one minute there was no corpse there, and the next minute there was. All we know about Stantley is there was a key to a room in the James Hotel in his pocket. Nothing else that'll happen. Well, Bill, that really sounds like something. Let's go. Let's go, he says. I'm going. Up to Larson. If you're staying here till I yell to you. I'm going back to your gin rum again. So I need you in a little while. All right. No, well, looks like we're ordered to continue playing, Drew. Maybe I get revenge now for those three games I lost. Never mind the game, Pat. We're going to the James Hotel. This is the room that Stanley occupied, Mr. Stevens. But he was only here one night. Mm-hmm. No baggage or anything, huh? Well, I was on duty when he checked in, sir. All he carried was a portfolio. Um, what did the police want with him? The police don't know. Yes. Oh, I'll take it. My tea, sir. Hello? Finally, you answer phone, eh, Sandy? Where are the papers? Well, you see, I... We know you have been dealing with someone else. But my government is uh, prepared to pay much more for the plan. Well, couldn't we meet somewhere and talk this over? Hello? 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 I must have said the wrong thing. They hung up. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, 
yes, Mrs. Santley. This is the police call, miss. Uh, Please check the records and see if Mr. Santley made any outgoing calls when he checked in last night and get me the numbers. Uh, yes, sir, I have his card right here. Uh, no, sir, there are no outgoing calls on his card. Uh -huh. Thanks. I'd be there if he made any calls, Mr. Stevens. Yes, I'd hope there were some. Well, this is really a prize murder. Not only don't we know a thing about the murderer, but we don't even know anything about the victim. That's what I wanted to tell you. If we don't find out anything at Larson's, we can pack up. You know, this is the first case where an unknown man is murdered in a store window with a dozen people looking on and nobody saw a thing. Scott? You'll find a way out, Drew. You always do. Uh, there's always a first time for everything, Pat. And this looks like it. I don't know. Pat, those three words describe every single angle of this case. Oh, here we are. Okay, Pat, hop out. Hey, you, you can't park there. Oh, sorry, Mr. Stevens. I didn't know it was you. Okay, Morrison. You want to do it at this corner? Yes, sir. Since 10 this morning. Say, Morrison, was there a fire on the block at noon or an auto smash-up or something that would cause a crowd to gather? No, sir, nothing. You see, if there had been an accident or some sudden excitement that would draw the attention of anyone standing in front of the window and give the murderer a chance to get the body in. Oh, well... Everything in this case leads up a blind alley. Why should this be an exception? Oh, because it may be a loud backfire or an explosion of some kind. No, oh, it was kind of a loud noise I remember about then when a car skidded turning the corner. Huh? What kind of a car? A uh, big green sedan, Rhode Island license plate. I didn't get the license number. Oh, well, that might be something. Thanks, Martin. It's all right, Stephen. Pop out, will you, Pat? Okay. Oh, uh, the legs after a ride. Pat? I'm going into Larson's to talk to Bill. Do I go with you? No, no. I have a job for you. Uh-huh. Get back to the office and get on the telephone. Yeah. Check every midtown hotel garage until you find one that has a big green sedan with a Rhode Island license plate. Rhode Island's a small state. It can't be more than a couple of cars that match that description. I'll get the owner's name and hotel room. Will you be back after you talk to Bill? No, I'll call you. Uh, maybe I'll drop in. Headquarters is only around the corner. Now, hurry, will you, Pat? Okay, Bill. Okay to go in, Morrison? Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Stevens. Sergeant Martin's in the display window with the dummy. Huh. There's a gag there somewhere. Hello, Bill. What are you doing in the window? Huh? What am I doing in the window, he says. Uh, I'm modeling a new box flat. What are you doing here? Oh, nothing. Just thought I'd drop in and see if I could help. You can help. Beat it. No, wait a minute. I want to tell you something. You're a little joke, girl. Oh. Uh -huh. A floor walker here saw Santley come in carrying a briefcase. And it's missing now. Mm -hmm. He checked his fingerprints with the federal office. He's an airplane designer. That's all we know. It mean anything to you? Huh. That information means that five's my lucky number, Bill. In five minutes, I'm going to make a five-cent phone call, and five bucks will get you ten if I'm not on the trail of a gang of killers. Pat, this is Drew. Any luck? Oh, the best. Only one car fitting that description in the Midtown Garage. Hotel Jewish. Car belongs to room 870. Oh, Pat, I love you. You're wonderful. Yeah, I know. But be careful, will you, Drew? Sure, I will. I'll keep whoever I find in front of me all the time. Stantley was stabbed in the back, you know. Floor? Thanks. Uh, 870, Pat. You want to be right here. Very well. All right, everybody. Back against that window. What? All three of you. Come on, move. What's going on here? It's the Stevens, huh? I thought your voice sounded familiar. Clerks in the James Hotel and your gang, eh? Well, this is quite a setup. All right, start talking, you. About what? Getting cute, eh? Never mind, I'll do the talking. You just nod your head. I think I've got this figured pretty well. We listen. You made a deal with Santa. He was going to sell you plans for a new airplane motor. 
He didn't trust you and insisted he meet you in a public place where there were people around. So? So you met him inside Larson's store, in front of the door that leads to the display window. At exactly 12 o'clock, you had somebody drive your car outside and go into a skid, knowing that the people outside the window would turn to see what was happening. They always do, you know. Yes, I know. And just at that moment, you stabbed Stanley, took his briefcase, and threw his body into the window. You closed the window door and walked out as nice as you pleased. Nobody in the store saw you because a couple of your men stood in front of you all the time. Right? Come on, talk. We do not have to talk. If you will turn the back of you, you will see why. Oh, you're kidding, of course. You don't think I believe there's anybody in back of you. <laughs> Good work, Stephen. Come now. Yes. Everybody out. Right. Uh, now, the car where it is. That's how I must have placed it. Stolen anyhow. Right. Come, Snell, move right. it. Come on, right. get him move it. I'll take the briefcase. Right. But first, I kill this policeman with a knife as I kill Santa. Oh, Come on, boys. Grab those nasty bums. Get over there. Come outside in the hall while I see if they've hurt through. Get out. I have. I'll strangle them with my own hands. Drew, please open your eyes. Please, Drew. Do you see anything, Pat? Any signs coming through? No, I don't, Drew. Drew, Drew, please. It's me, Pat. Say something. Oh. Pat. Somebody's been playing gin rummy with me. I went down when somebody knocked. Right on the back of my head. 